this is Kevin Volpe. Welcome back. In a previous session, we talked about a weight loss study among veterans in which participants who were given the opportunity to put some of their own money at risk, which was forfeited if they didn't lose weight, did very well. There was another group in the program that received daily lottery type incentives. These were designed to take advantage of the fact that people overestimate small probabilities near zero and also can anticipate the regret they'd feel if they don't win something they could have easily won. This also has the benefit of providing what psychologists call variable reinforcement. Participants each day were given a weight loss goal and were asked to call in their weights. Every day a lottery was run. If they called in their weight and it was at or below the goal, they were given a 1 in 5 chance of winning $10 a day and a 1 in 100 chance of winning $100 a day. So it had an average value of about $2.80 a day. We found this was extremely successful. So at 16 weeks, the weight loss goal was 16 pounds, and people in the lottery or regret contest lost an average of 13.1 pounds. This compared with 14 pounds among those participants in the deposit contract and 3.9% in the control group. Importantly, about 50% of the participants in both intervention arms, the lottery and the deposit, reached their weight loss goal of a pound a week over 16 weeks, compared to about 10% in the control group. We've done a number of studies where we've looked at this question of whether lottery incentives are effective at motivating behavior. Here's another example. Warfarin is an anticoagulant which is used to prevent strokes in people with irregular heartbeats or mechanical heart valves. Missing medications is actually quite dangerous because if your blood level of warfarin is too low, you aren't protected from strokes. If you take too many pills, then that's also dangerous because your blood gets too thin and there's a higher risk of bleeding. So having good adherence is clinically quite important. Yet, adherence rates in many contexts are quite poor. So we ran a similar study here in terms of a lottery with a 1 in 5 chance of winning $10 a day, a 1 in 100 chance of winning $100 a day if your warfarin was taken the previous day. And we used an electronic pill bottle to measure whether you're taking your medicine the previous day. The way these lotteries work is you get a two-digit number, let's say, for example, 42. Every day we draw a number. If 42 comes up, you win $100. If one digit matches either the 4 in the first digit or the 2 in the second digit, you win $10. But you only win if you took your medication the day before. We found in this first pilot study phenomenal impact in terms of percentage of incorrect doses people took. So against historic controls, which had a non-adherence rate of 22%, we found if we gave this $3 a day lottery 1.5% adherence, we also in a subsample gave larger incentives that were worth roughly $5 a day and found 2% non-adherence. Clearly above $3 a day, a lottery similar to what I just described, there's a threshold effect and we didn't need to provide more than that to get strong effects on adherence. Additional work also showed that these lotteries reduce time out of the INR range. And what the INR range is, is it gives a therapeutic range for what's a good level of warfarin, neither too high or too low. You want to be in that range as much as possible. And we further saw that this effect was particularly seen in those who were below the desired range at baseline, suggesting the effect is to reduce adherence. And here's a graph that shows what that looks like. Among those who are below INR range, we see an odds ratio of 0.49 for the predicted probability of being out of range with the lottery system compared to without the lottery system. This graph also shows the importance of targeting people who are not doing well at baseline for these programs. People who were doing well already, this didn't have much impact as you might expect. In subsequent work, we've tested whether it's more effective to use frequent small rewards, occasional jackpot rewards, or a combination of the two. A jackpot reward for a single one-time event might be the most effective way of getting people engaged. This is similar to what you see with Powerball-type lotteries, where there's a very low probability of winning, which people tend to overestimate. In many cases, it's one in several hundred million but they feel like they actually have a chance to win, but a very high magnitude reward, and that's what gets people's attention. 
We've worried, though, that for repeat behaviors, people would realize that with a jackpot type reward, that they never win. So imagine you're in this program for 180 days, and there's a very low probability of winning, let's say a one in a thousand chance of a thousand dollars. You would learn very quickly after 10 days, 20 days, 30 days, that you're not going to win. And that might be very demotivating. What we found in this study, which we did in the context of encouraging physical activity, is that, in fact, the combination lottery was more effective than either frequent small rewards or occasional jackpot rewards. In this session, we've shown some examples of how lotteries can be designed to provide frequent ongoing feedback, taking advantage of the fact people tend to overestimate small probabilities near zero and that lotteries provide variable reinforcement. Part of the appeal may be that lotteries have entertainment value as well. In subsequent sessions, we'll talk more about further iterations of this. Thank you.